What is up everyone? This is another Dragon Air Silent Gods video. I'm Scratch. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, guys, I want to talk about the top three best epic champions from every elemental affinity. The best of the best, the MVPs. And uh, yes, this will be based on my own opinion, guys, based on my experience with the champions. If you guys have any sort of different ideas, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts as well. Now, keep in mind, Dragonair is a very complex game and the champions, they do need to be paired with the right champions in order to uh, achieve the perfect synergy. So that will be very, very important to, to keep in mind. And I gotta say, there are a lot of awesome epic champions. It's pretty hard to pick three out of uh, each of the elemental affinities. And yeah, I just I just pick the ones that I personally like the most. The ones that I think that they will overall give you the most value on any account, okay? Starting with the very first one, guys, is going to be Dane. Now, probably you've heard me talking about Dane in Season 1 till you got bored of hearing me talking about Dane, okay? He is apparently a support champion, but he smacks so hard. He deals so much damage. He has an attack aura for City of Trials. Then he has this passive. When the hero deals damage to enemies with less than 50% HP by skills, recharges his ultimate energy. Very nice when champions have this in their kit. Then we have the battle skill AoE. Covers a decent amount of, uh, of, of the map, you know. A chance to put fear and healing prohibition on the enemies which is very nice. The ultimate is what makes this champion even better and so useful in so much content because he can dispel two buffs from the enemy. The Grave of Curse, the Ancient Battlefield, they will all buff. If you're going, for example, on, a, I don't know, like the, the Lightning Domain, the Tempest Domain, it will buff with Continuous Heal. Not only that he can remove them, but he can pull attack penalty, the smaller version, which is true, deal damage, and if the target is under 50% HP, it will steal the buffs instead and apply them to himself, okay? That's how good Dane is. Now, he's awesome to activate champions like Sigrid as well for Season 1, where uh, you have Poison and uh, uh, Fire combined together as an elemental affinity. This time around, we have... Uh, Fire and Necrosis in Season 2, so it's, it's a bit harder to combine the champions for these two elemental affinities. But I still think he's super powerful against wall bosses, against dungeons. The only place where he's not really that strong is honestly the, the Vortex, you know. But other than that, he's actually top-notch and it's so freaking hard to find a champion to do as many things as Dane does, you know. He does need accuracy in terms of artifacts. You can use pure damage ones if you want him in the goblin or you might want to use something that gives you accuracy just to make sure you're uh, gonna be able to remove the the buffs from the enemy land a decrease attack you know the next hero that we have on the list guys or champion however you guys like to call them let me know in the, co uh, in the comments down below how do you call the characters in this game heroes or champions what do you guys prefer i'm very curious because i was actually wondering the other day tunnel nun she is truly a wild hero her and Gertin, the best epic damage dealers in the entire game. When we're talking about single targets, the damage is just crazy from Tonanan. And yes, she is a wild hero, which might tell you it would be nice to pair her with a few different wild heroes. But hear me out. She doesn't necessarily need them, okay? She's a one-man army. The passive, the hero gains 20% extra crit rate. So... Every single skill will only require 80% crit rate in order to fully crit all the time. On top of it, each successful wild by allies grants 5% crit damage to the hero. The effect stacks up to 20 times. Bang, 100 crit damage straight off the back. And guess what? She is considered an ally in her team. That's why she's a one-man army. She doesn't really need any other wild hero in order to stack her passive. Of course, if you want her to truly unleash her potential super fast, you need some, uh, some wild champions to get her going faster. But if no, slowly and surely, she will activate this passive on her own. And my god, in the Vortex, man, like the damage that she's dealing against bosses as well, uh, dungeon bosses, uh, world bosses, whatever, she is just crazy. The battle skill, Yields a double blade, dealing fire damage to the target three times. So she has multi-hit, which is nice. Extra damage based on the amount of uh, uh, buffs on the hero and the target. 
And then with the ultimate, she buffs increased attack on herself and then she, uh, basically hits the target five times. Is a lot of damage. Like, honestly, she's just such a good damage dealer. Then we have the last hero for uh, these uh, elemental affinity guys. And of course, it's going to be the free champion, Liko. I'm just messing with you. Unfortunately, she sucks. She looks cool, but she sucks. Adolphus, the MVP, the creme de la creme. When we're talking about shield champions, Adolphus, my God, he is such an insane support champion, guys. And all he does is shield and heal, okay? So he hear me out. This passive is very, very good. If the target already has a shield when the hero grants them a shield, additionally heals them equal to 75% of the shield granted. Let's just say he decides to put a 40k, uh, a 40k shield on, a, on an ally. If that ally already has a 1 HP shield, is going to heal by 75% of the 40k. So this is massive to help and keep your team alive. And on top of it, not only that he puts shield with a battle skill and gives ultimate energy to the target, to the ally, but it puts shield on all your team with this, uh, with this skill right here. And it's just such a good uh, epic champion. Great for the vortex, dungeon support, arena, world bosses. You name it, you name it, Fame Mander, Pillar of Trials, like everywhere, literally. Let me know which one of these three is your most favorite one. Moving over to the next elemental affinity, guys, we have Frost. And here as well, we have quite a few, quite a few awesome ones, a lot of uh, solid damage dealers too. I'm going to start with Gardras. So I'm going to be skipping a lot of them in here. And there, I'm going to explain you why I pick Gardras over Rava, over Rowena, over Dorkaras, for example. Man. Gardras, he's just so good at getting crowd control, okay? If you're putting him in the Fame Mander, in the Pillar of Trials, if you're putting him somewhere where you need to control waves, including Arena, he is just so, so freaking good. Resistance or in all battles, the hero has a 25% chance to immunize the inflicted debuff. Each time the hero gets immune, recharges ultimate energy by 25%. So the more debuffs you're attempting to land on him, the higher the chance for him to gain ultimate energy and mess you up, basically. You have the battle skill, which put, uh, puts attack penalty too on a single target, but hey, this comes in handy against bosses. And then you have the ultimate. It doesn't cover the entire area because that would be a bit too OP, but basically he stuns, he knocks back, and he puts recharge speed penalty on the enemies. Man, this is so good when you're struggling on the Fame Ander or the Pillar of Trials. It's unbelievable, okay? Like, I used him so much last season, and honestly, super, super nice. Gertin, of course, we talked about Tonalan. There's no way in hell I will do a top 3 video without talking about Gertin. Ice Blast only in Season 2, guys, and of course, moving from here on. She is insane, okay? The damage, I'm using her in my Vortex team, and... She deals like 35 to 40 million damage alone. Of, of course, I have literally the best setup for her. But my god, her damage is just crazy. Probably you saw so many videos this season from me on, on Gertin. Attack aura for dungeon battles, unfortunately. If this would work for the Vortex, it would be amazing. She has this passive where she buffs herself with, uh, with uh, Kree damage. And the good thing about her as well is that... Uh, she will buff crit rate too. So you only need to build her with 80% crit rate, okay? And you're gaining the 30% crit damage from here. And you're gaining the 20% crit rate from the battle skill. But ice, uh, ice Blast heroes, guys, they stack Ice Crystals on them and basically just spray them after on the, on the enemy. So the battle skill strikes an enemy twice and grants a crit rate bonus for 5 seconds. But this is going to occur so so often that the crit rate bonus will literally always be there, okay? Then you have the ultimate on a 16 seconds, okay? And this deals pretty, pretty good damage. Jumps towards an enemy dealing cold damage and gaining a stack of ice crystals. Now, of course, she needs to have a champion like Bladin or Sheena to uh, activate her and give her a lot of ice crystals in order to go crazy. But when she goes crazy, you are definitely going to be to be surprised. Then we're going to talk about Voresh, guys. I know a lot of you guys really love the champion. He's a solid one. But when we are talking about the $1 chest, 
I prioritize Frerbart and Garius over him any day. So he is probably on my list after those two. So if you are deciding to purchase the $1 chest that appears in Season 1, guys, I know a lot of people are constantly coming and saying, I got Forash, I regret it. I, instead of getting Garius or Frerbart, people get a bit deceived with, uh, with Voresh, you know, thinking that, my God, he's just so game-changing. Nothing compares with a Frerbart or a Garius, okay? So keep that in mind. He has this passive where he actually heals a bit your teammates uh, whenever he, he deals damage based on the attack. So you want to give him a lot of attack when you build him. This deals cold damage to the enemy three times. When dealing damage has a chance to dispel a buff from them, which is a pretty nice one. It's only a 50% chance, but it's, it's, it's not a bad one. And the ultimate, this is literally the best thing in his kit. Covers the entire uh, area, which is great to activate Sigrid, for example, as well in the in the Goblin. Great for uh, for Arena to put uh, block buffs on the on the enemy, and of course for PV content, great on a stun set. Great with a lot of skill haste. Great with the Witch's Remains or Crown of the Unclean, just because he's a multi hitter. But is a triple hit on the enemy. Deals pretty good damage, and he has a chance to put buff prohibition. So he's a very very strong character. You know, I just wanted to mention the thing with Frerbart and Garius. They're so important in the end game that it's much easier to replace a Voresh than it is to replace a Frerbart or a Garius, you know? So I just wanted you guys to be aware of it. But he's an awesome, awesome epic champion. Moving over to the Necrosis. Like, right here, we actually have quite a few. We have quite a few. We have, a, uh, we have a Kyrza, which is the new epic champion that everybody will get for free from uh, doing the Pillar of Trials. You need to do 20 stages on each one of the elemental affinities. If you cannot do that by the end of Season 2, uh, I'm sorry, but you must be playing the game wrong, okay? So I would strongly suggest you to watch some guides, see what you're doing wrong, because reaching level 20 on, a, on three different stages in the second season should definitely be very accessible to every free-to-play player too, you know? So... I just wanted to, to point that out because she's an awesome uh, epic champion and you don't want to miss on her. Then, Joyce, such an amazing damage dealer. I'm a big fan of him. Gladros, a good champion too, to shield. Davrik, pretty interesting too. But my very first pick is Questa, my, my baby. She's actually such a good epic champion. Now, I've been using her like crazy in the Bera. I've been using her like crazy last season. And guess what? I started using her like crazy in season two because why not? Attack Aura for Arena. Then you have the passive. Every time an enemy dies, grants recovery over time to all allies for 10 seconds. This was so good when you don't have uh, when you, when you don't have healers. It was so good for me when I didn't have healers, basically, you know. But it's a, it's, it's a, it's a nice passive. Then you have the battle skill. Charges towards the enemy with the lowest current HP, which makes her super strong as a sniper for Arena. You have attack penalty for 5 seconds. The ultimate jumps at the enemy deals damage, steals 30% of their ultimate energy, and heals the hero. So she's constantly going to heal herself back, which is very, very nice. Then the next champion on the list, guys, from the Necrosis element is Tia. Such a strong counter to Sigrid for Arena, guys. And you're gonna see Sigrids everywhere in Arena. Well, if you had no idea, Tia can actually easily counter Sigrid. I actually, uh, I am planning to do a video on... Um, on her in the next few days for arena but basically she has this passive grants invisibility to the hero for five seconds when taking damage higher than 10 percent of the max hp in addition allies under invisibility take 15 percent less damage so you have damage reduction then the battle skill heals the ally with the lowest current hp and the allies with invisibility each ally can be healed only once per cast the ultimate skill guys not only that is a good counter to Sigrid, but it's an amazing counter to Tamar, the legendary hero from the Lightning Element that puts block buffs. It's a great counter against uh, Faesa from the Radiance Element because those heroes are very OP, okay? They have OP ultimates. Either they stun you, either they, they blind you, they put recharge speed penalty. So basically what uh, Tia can do for PvP is that she has this 16%, uh, 16 seconds sorry, complete recharge time. And the initial is 9 seconds. Now you can make that 9 seconds even shorter with skill haste. So that will ensure that you're going to have block debuffs and immunity on all of your ranged heroes in the team. While the rest, they cannot debuff you. Vorash cannot debuff you. This is a good counter against Vorash. So having this is actually very, very solid. On top of it, 
is very solid for the fire domain. It's very solid for uh, uh, places like the heretical ruins. Very solid for places like uh, the Grave of Wrath because of the healing prohibition and the immunity, guys. So definitely do not sleep on Tia. Very, very good uh, champion. Then, this was my most wanted epic for Season 2, and I finally got him uh, a few weeks ago. Zarnoth. Attack aura for uh, all battles. Very, very good. Then, every fourth basic attack heals the ally with the lowest current HP. We have a chance to silence the enemy for 5 seconds. Now, silence is actually a pretty good... Uh, is a pretty good crowd control. Cannot cast battle skills and ultimate, right? Very good. The battle skill puts a recharge speed penalty AoE. And then you have the ultimate, which deals damage and heals. Now, this hero is the best built on a stun set, the best built with a lot of skill haste and damage, okay? Like, he can deal damage, he can heal, he can do a lot of, uh, a lot of work, but you do want to have accuracy on him. At least the 20, uh, 200 plus for, uh, for the PvE content, you know? But this will be top 3 for Necrosis. Moving over to top 3 for uh, Radiance, guys. Like, are there any questions? Garius, the, the MVP, so strong with the Gatekeeper Staff, the Legendary Artifact, if you have it. If not, honestly, you can literally get so many different ones that will actually help you out. But Garius has this crazy, crazy ultimate skill. The rest doesn't even matter. His stacks, defense, recovery. A hit, a hit recovery, knock up. This skill dispels all debuffs from him and then kills your entire team, okay? The healing can be so crazy that, honestly, it's gonna fully uh, recharge the HP on an, uh, on an ally, like, twice, okay? That's how much healing you're getting from, uh, from Garius. Very, very solid. Then the next one on the list, guys. I'm actually going with Clovis here. I like Clovis a lot. I like Hegio. I like Nessa. But I'm going to go with Clovis. The reason for it, he's a good tank, man. And I feel like we're always in need of good tanks. Increases all allies' defense by 24% in all battles, which is a bonus already, similar with, uh, with Garius. He puts uh, increased defense on himself. Then he taunts, he gains defense up again on top of the passive. And the ultimate attack penalty and drops ultimate energy on the target. He's very good for... Uh, World bosses, very good for dungeon bosses, you know. But you need to have a, a healer with him in the in the team, you know. Good for arena as well. Then we have Catherine. I like Catherine a lot as well. She basically uh, gives us uh, gives us some healing, some shield. The battle skill heals the ally with the lowest current HP and gives them defense up. The ultimate heals all your team and gives you debuff immunity, guys. Super good for the Vortex if you need a, a debuff immunity because this will go on all of your champions. So that defense down from the boss will not land. Super good for all the dungeons that require you to either cleanse, either have immunity because the boss will debuff you, you know. And just generally to gain extra healing, you know. Feymander, uh, if you need her for, uh, for the Pillar of Trials, especially on the uh, stages where you're, you're fighting the boss. She's definitely going to be very, very solid. She does need to have very high enlightenment uh, in order to provide you a good, uh, a good healing, you know. Then, moving over to the lightning ones. Right here as well, we have quite a few solid ones. It's, it's quite, of a, quite of a hard pick, but I'm going to start with uh, Shaltar. And he is very unique. That's kind of like why I'm going for him. Uh, and he's solid. Like, he actually helps you a lot, you know. Basic attacks have a 30% chance of releasing chain Lightning damage uh, to deal derivative damage to enemies. Each lightning chain can bounce four times among enemies at most. So derivative damage can be very powerful against bosses, guys. He deals a lot of damage on the vortex. He deals a lot of damage on uh, on bosses in general. And I've seen a lot of people debating the vile ink artifact or the eyeball of the giant for him just to deal more damage. So I'm kind of like in between because I haven't really compared the the two of them on him. The battle skill grants a lightning shield and 15% attack up to an ally for 4 seconds and deals derivative damage to enemies. And the passive, this, uh, the ultimate, sorry, this is what makes him very interesting. Enhances all allies with lightning force, granting them Blessing of Thunder. The Blessing of Thunder gains a chance of dealing additional lightning damage with basic attacks. When launching basic attacks, all allies with Blessing of Thunder have a 30% chance of summoning a lightning strike on the enemy, dealing derivative damage, guys. So, derivative damage, how I mentioned, can be very strong, and 
he definitely, definitely brings in some very big numbers. Then we have a Lolita or Yola, attack aura for all battles. When she silenced the enemies, she actually has a chance to turn it into a stun. Then uh, she silenced with a battle skill. The ultimate attacks a target three times. Great to run the Crown of the Unclean, the Witch's Remains, or to run something that gives you a lot of skill haste. And then she puts attack penalty on the enemy and silence them, which can turn into a stun. Super strong for PvE content, strong for Arena, strong for the Feymander, strong for the Pillar of Trials. Like, if you have a definitely skill, skill, uh, sk uh, scroll her, sorry, and uh, use her in the content. Don't, uh, don't waste any time. I'm so lost all the time with scroll, book, uh, skill, you know, like, my god, every single game calls everything differently. Then, we do have Nathaniel, which is an awesome support champion. We actually need more champions like him. We have a HP Aura for all battles. When a buff expires or is dispelled from any target on the field, heals the ally with the lowest current HP. The battle skill dispels a debuff from all allies within range and grants them recovery over time, which is very, very good. And then you have the ultimate, grants a shield and defense up to all allies for 10 seconds. The more enemies he hit, uh, he hits, sorry, the bigger the shield. And that makes him great against uh, wall bosses, against Fae Mander, against Arena. Preferably, of course, if you really want to get the most value out of the champion, you want to use him in uh, areas where you're hitting a lot of targets to have a massive shield. But either way, he is an amazing support champion. And if you have him, you should definitely use him. You know, don't... Uh, don't sleep on him because he's very, very good. And moving over to the last elemental affinity, guys, which is Poison. Now, here as well, we have quite a few awesome, um, awesome epic heroes. How I mentioned, it was pretty hard to pick three out of each one of these elemental affinities, guys. So if you really have any different uh, opinion whatsoever, let me know in the comments down below. And please let me know why as well, because I am very curious to hear it. Now, here I'm going to start with Corin. Corin is one of the best enablers for the big poison damage dealers. So. He works great with Vikana, works great with Arrest. He has this battle skill that has a chance uh, to land a stack of poison and is a triple, uh, a triple hitter, you know, so he has quite a few chances to, to stack poisons. The ultimate is a bit more funky because he really needs uh, more enemies in order to really get the most value out of him. But at the same time, it's not really going to happen most of the times with, uh, with bosses, you know, so... Not necessarily the, the craziest ultimate, but the main thing that really shines on him is the battle skill and just being able to activate activate the, the other poisoners, the other big damage dealers, you know. Then, of course, we're going to go with Furbart. It's kind of like a no-brainer. Like, man, it's such a complete, such a complete epic hero. Defense aura for dungeons. A healing and cleanse on the ally with the lowest HP. You have healing on your entire team in this area based on his defense. This alone can keep your team alive in the vortex, guys. Literally. And then you just need a shield just to be able to extend the HP. Now, of course, the boss will hit uh, harder and harder, so it will not be easy to, to stay alive. And then you have the ultimate. Attack down AoE. Very good to activate Sigrid as well. You know, very good for a, a lot of content. Even in the Goblin, it's good to tank. Especially if you don't have the most OP Goblin Champions. Uh, there's literally no content where he's not super, super good. For Arena, he's not the best tank, of course, because he doesn't really do that much for uh, uh, Arena. But other than that, he's just so good in so many different areas. Especially in endgame. And early game is, is just like the MVP. The last one is going to be Vikak. Is the best epic cleanser in the game. When he's inflicted with a debuff, he has a chance to put accuracy penalty on the target. Then he has the battle skill that puts attack penalty on the enemy. That works great for the vortex as a uh, secondary attack down uh, for dungeons. For the purple dragon, a lot of people will struggle with the purple dragon because he hits super hard early on. So the faster you put attack down on him and a battle skill is the right, the right thing to, to use, you know, the better for the team to stay alive against the purple dragon. And then you have the ultimate, dispels two debuffs from each ally and heals them. The more these uh, debuffs dispelled, the bigger the healing. It's like he's been made for the Grave of Rod, guys. The Flame Domain. The Vortex, when he's putting the defense down. Uh, wherever you need a cleanser, he's actually going to, to step up and get the job done. But this is everything for my top three best epic champions from every elemental affinity. 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. As usual, appreciate every single one of you guys watching till the end. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you smash a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.